If it wasn't for my mother being strict, I would never have applied myself to teach myself how to do any of the things that I'm doing right now. I get in so much trouble, I'd be in my room with nothing to do. So I had to create my own entertainment, which was the music. She was going to Berkeley, the Berkeley School of Music up in Boston. And after a year, she came home and she said, you know, class and school in general was just not for me. What I said to her was, I appreciate your honesty because you certainly could have gone back up there and spent more of my money and wasted it. So I do appreciate that you have the maturity to say, this is not what I want. I decided to go home, regroup, focus on the artistry. Mom was kind of hassling me, like, you got to get something cracking. What's happening? These producers reached out and said, yo, can you come to L.A.? We want to work with you. And I was just like, might as well do it. It was her first adventure away from home like that. And she worked on this project with Schoolboy Q. And Kendrick Lamar ended up also being on, on that particular song. It's called Collard Greens and it just took off. I mean, I was amazed. I'd go on the YouTube and I was like, they have a million views. <laughs> it was unbelievable. From that, she ended up ultimately um, being able to, to sign um, a deal with BMG. I know it was probably the collard greens. I'm not signed. I got a percentage on this album. They got people who specifically look for that. But when I played my music and what I really do, and they were like, I want to sign you as an artist. You, what do you want? What do you want? And so I told her what I wanted. I didn't want to sign as an artist. I wanted to sign as a producer, as a songwriter. And she agreed to it. It's a monthly check situation. I am required to deliver a certain amount of production, a certain amount of songs. I've written for Ty Dolla Sign, Sean Paul, I produce for Childish Gambino, um, and I've worked with Ninth Wonder, Andre Harris from Dre and Vidal, a lot of people. Got a long, long way to go. Got a long, long way. Got a long, long way. A long, long way to go. Got a long, long way. Yeah. Right now I'm in Atlanta because I'm working on some new stuff. My producer, Rico, is based down here. For this project, I'm paying for everything. Everything's independent. The money comes back through touring, obviously album sales, streaming through Spotify. Cause I'm not paying Rico for these beats. He's gonna get his percentage, 50%. I'll get the other 50. That's how it works. It's not about just paying each other. It's, it's about coming up with with something together. We get in these zones where it's like, man, I don't even want to think about what I'm making. I'm just about to press some buttons, literally. Right. And, you know, make whatever happens, happens, you know? Just creating with with no certain goal in mind. Like, that's, that's really fun. That's how you enjoy music. Yeah, I want to make whatever, whenever, and put it out whenever. Because that's why staying independent is very important for both of us. What I'm trying to do is show you how you can flip nothing into something. I started this based on me having a passion for this. Hours of me sitting in a room singing the same notes over and over again, like psychotic stuff people wouldn't even understand. I would never stop music because it wasn't making me money. That's not what I'm doing it for initially, but obviously now I have to, but <laughs> that's not what it's about.